What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Today we're going to do another episode of Dock Talk where I talk with local captains, see what they've been doing and seeing out on the water. Uh, we actually missed a month, maybe two months. Um, I've been trying to keep up with these. I do apologize. When you are busy, I tell you what, months feel like weeks and they just fly by and it's already middle of August. I'm uh, going to have to get the Christmas decorations out soon, but uh, we, nonetheless, we're going to try and catch up. We're going to cover pretty much the summer. We'll talk about summer diving and fishing. Lobster season opened up, uh, and we'll try and um, cover as much as we can. I do. I think I have four guys coming by today, and one person hopefully will make it. Uh, actually, recently, unfortunately, was attacked by a shark, but he did live to tell the tale. So hopefully, he makes it by, and we'll get that story from him. Um, but first and foremost, huge thanks to the docks on Stock Island. They are the ones that give me the space to do these videos. If you're in the area, you're down in the Lower Keys, come check them out. The Docks uh, Restaurant and Raw Bar, that anything from just coming to grab a snack and a happy hour drink um, to having a nice sit down dinner or lunch, whatever it may be. The Docks on Stock Island, be sure to check them out. A huge thanks. Um, and first guy we have up is, you can come over here, Mr. Mr. Garrett Frey. Um, Captain Garrett Frey, he's been on the, um, I guess show, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what this series. is. Series. The series uh, a few times call now. Will. Um, but we're going to talk about a little bit about fishing. Um, so what have you, I, I, I think, I haven't seen you in probably two months at least. You've yeah, been, you've been fairly uh, I busy? think there was one or two episodes that I missed, but uh, it's been it's been good. I got a nice few flurry of trips uh, middle of this month, but it's been tough. The conditions have been tough. Yeah. I mean, especially, I imagine, for you with diving, the reef's been green as could be. Yeah, that's what everyone's been saying and seeing. and Which can help for some, for yellowtailing, the dirtier the water, the dumber the fish. Beautiful. <laughs> Love it when they're dumb and they only just think about... They only feed with their nose, not their eyes, because if a yellowtail can use his eyes, you're not getting three pounders to the boat very often. Yeah, right. But, um, so what what is what has your been your game plan been? I guess go back a little. Think if you can in the middle of July. What was the last time we did this? May maybe June? Summer. How has summer been? Not don't focus on just the last couple of weeks, but what, what what have you been doing this summer? Uh so a few weeks back, it was really good for the muttons. Uh, I was getting good groupers too. I saw it was you that caught a couple of Kubera. Yeah, like daytime. I uh, just got a nice Kubera. Just that was just the other day. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of guys have had, like, either one or the other. They've killed it at night, or they've just been like, "Why do we even do this?" Yeah. It feels like sword fishing some days, where you're <laughs> like, "I'm never doing this again." But I haven't been out there for the night trips at all. For me, I'm. I want to be home and yeah. bed. Yeah. No, at night. I hear that. I hate night fishing personally. If you're running a night trip for a charter, you're getting home around midnight maybe yeah. and then you gotta cut fish then you gotta go home and you gotta wake up and do it all over again at <laughs> five in the morning running no, a running no, a day's you. work on four hours sleep no. on a yeah no no i hear that i'd uh i'd rather get some rest but there are guys that live and die for it and they love it and some guys do really well with it but so the this time of year um they do just to explain a little more the kubera snapper are spawning um big big giant kuberas they spawn on the wrecks and a lot of the guys will go out at nighttime and catch them with lobster personally to each their own i don't want to eat a big giant kubera snapper like the small ones are okay but i don't know like i know they're fun and a lot of and a lot of guys enjoy it but as far as food, catch, a, catch a couple but food value it has to be under 30 pounds yeah anything over that it's you can see a clear difference in the color of the yeah. meat between a a big mutton like a 16 pound mutton and a 30 pound kubera they you can clearly yeah. see the difference between those two snappers so fillets. a lot of people do that this time of year they're catching the big kubera at night and you'll see some come in during the day like garrett said he just caught one a few days ago yeah. uh, but that's what we're referring to so that we had that system push in. i was actually in alaska but that oh. storm push in did that change anything for you when it came through was it clear before then and dirty it after? was clear before and then it definitely stirred it up and did what, it affect the fishing at all it i would say what it did is just make the sharks just it's like it feels like the turning point for the sharks because like pissed them off what i know what <laughs> happens in the summer and for me for sure is i have a couple of wrecks that i love to fish but if you're like if you have clients that are like i don't really want to catch sharks you cannot go there yeah um there's a wreck we have in 170 feet it's awesome it got it has everything most of the time starting about july it's a spawning point for the black tips and they own that wreck yeah. you can show up not even put any chum in the water you can just slap the water twice and all of a sudden you see two or three spinners and black and tips behind there. the boat just in that wild and you're like well uh, i don't think we're gonna land anything here. they just get so trained with here in the boats it's amazing like like you said you don't even put chum in the water and they just show no. up they know you're there they know I, what time it is 
They're smart creatures. They learn. They're there in numbers, and when you catch one, they have bite marks all over them. Yeah. So they're spawning, or they're either feeding so close together that they're just biting each other and whatever. Angry, but I think they're just creatures. there to spawn. Like black chips and spinners, that wreck is done. And a couple others are the same thing. They, the sharks, they own that one. Yeah. Are you sticking to the same program, just bottom fishing, cut Primarily, bait? Have you been yep. catching any live bait at all? Nope, no. Any pin fit? Or you don't nope. do the, you don't no trap traps. I, I wish I could put traps out. Either they don't catch or they get stolen. So yeah. I just give up. I just yeah. gave up. Oh, no, I hear that for sure. Oh, it's uh, it's pretty much Bonita Strip start to finish. Yeah, yep. What, um, have you been doing, did you do any personal lobstering? Uh, I did a shore dive with a buddy during our Florida version of the mini season. We got an extra day this year. Yeah. That was really fun. We just, just did a little beach swim out yeah. and we got our limit and that was pretty cool. But I, was I didn't have any like charters for it. Yeah, I was curious to hear if you, if you had been out because for me, and I'll talk a little more uh, about this with Ben, but for me it's been so different from mini to now. It seems like a whole different season, like it's that much better. But I was, I was just curious if you had run out at all. For me, it's like a lot of people like that golf side where it's the shallower stuff and those long, deep ledges. Yeah. I usually prefer the stuff like out on the reef and like 10 to 16 feet because yeah. I don't have anyone around. Yeah. And you can oh, dive. absolutely. But to have someone who comes in from out of town and be like, can you dive 15 feet? They're like, <laughs> how about Not without five? a tank. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Not without a tank. So for me, it's hard to sell like dive trips because... I don't want to be, and you know what? It wasn't as crazy this year, so it would have been a little safer. But every year, something bad happens to yeah. you know, someone or something for whatever yeah. reason, and I'm like, I just try to stay away from it. Oh yeah, we we did the Atlantic side uh, during mini season as well, just to try to, and we were, I saw one boat. It was it was really windy and it was murky. Yeah, track, it was for full seat. Yeah, for, I'll take that over. 700 boats any day you know? you're like how you're playing a game how many boats can i count within eyesight and oh yeah you run out of fingers and toes before it you really get is wild just like anything away. though the more attention that gets on the more people are going to show up and do it just like the scallop thing up and i think that's getting River bigger and Stein. bigger yeah, i yeah. see stuff about it all the time more yeah. stuff just coming across my yeah. feed on instagram or whatever yeah. so it's clearly getting more popular just like anything um well anything else come to mind any memorable catches in the past couple months i said it's been a while since i talked to you so I've been fishing really heavy current, and I've gotten a few really nice fish. Um, gosh, I, it, it hurts to let it go. I caught a red. I caught a red snapper a few days ago. Oh that was yeah. Probably couldn't have been less than 26, 27 pounds. Are you Just, kidding me? Holy! Like, makes this it would have been wider Did than you get this a picture table. Of it? Uh, I have a couple pictures of them. Okay. I'll um, throw some of those up. But we're using thirty. We're using that day. We're using 36 ounces of lead. I mean, it's it's <laughs> running like God. it's running like a raging river. We're in 200 feet and two Just and a half, screaming. two two and a quarter pound of lead was was walking out. But the second it would start to hold, the rod would just load over. We got a black grouper, red snapper, red snapper, red snapper, mutton, and, and there a few you cut other bait, cut bonita. Yeah, you couldn't put a live bait down. It would. The water was moving so uh, fast, yeah. the live bait would be doing spinning. <laughs> spin. Yeah, there's no way. He's like, I can't even swim this fast. Oh, my God. So it was it was good and bad. I mean, it was so much work for my clients because reeling up a couple pounds of lead on oh, absolutely. hand cranking. We were hand cranking. It was, it was exhausting, but they were troopers, and we caught some cool fish, and it was a fun day, but definitely different than your... Yeah, your average. It just makes it tough fishing in that current. I, I used to get so frustrated with it, and like you said, you have to put so much lead on there. After a certain point, it's like you're sword fishing. Like it's, the fish is fighting the lead, and then the customer's fighting the lead. It's just. <laughs> I mean, the fish you're like you're just turning the handle and you're just grinding the gears, and then it's not like give and take and give. Yeah. And take. It's just. Yeah. Ch -ch -ch just slowly different... grinding the beans and getting it up, and then but, it floats up at the end, and you get some quality fish, and it can be a really good scenario to catch a lot of nice muttons, but. Yeah, it but it takes away some of the sportiness of it, I guess. A little, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, like your job is to create opportunities, and you have to adapt. Like you can't control the current, yeah. so if that's what you got to do to put fish in the boat, like I think that's great that it's, you have the the knowledge to do that. Honestly, yeah. it's most, shark most, over most shark would be or like, two and a half pounds of lead. What yeah. do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> most people would be like, "Oh, current screaming, we're gonna go yellowtail in thirty feet and yeah. catch." It's hard to anchor tails. up. You're letting out almost 500 feet of rope oh, and 200 alone. feet just, just to keep current. it from dragging yeah that's wild so man. it's trippy but it's there's been a lot of action a lot of life well, good but for you. you've had to earn it yeah good for you even putting fish in the boat in that stuff i would give up i get so frustrated oh, with gosh. the current yeah it gets i'm like is there a better option or do i keep fighting it i might as well <laughs> fight it because i don't know where else to go yeah what else do you do there's yeah well, cool. it's tough so it's worked out but 
I've had to earn it for yeah. sure. And that's the time of year, like late, I mean, th these late months. I mean, July was fine. There was plenty of options and stuff like that. It comes into August, and we're getting later in the month now. And second, it's late August, September. You're going out there, and you're earning you oh, know, You're earning every bite. They don't come easy. It's that hot, stagnant time of year. Unless you're, if you're like, I love catching sharks, I'm like, say less. Catch we're sharks, ready. Call this guy. Yeah. <laughs> say less. Bulls, lemons, hammers. I mean, <laughs> not even hammers so much, but just everything yeah. they're just ready they love that hot water and all the other fish are just like eh. yeah ideal they're just they're just more lackadaisical they don't want to put in the effort yeah. they're just sweating they'd rather sit in the shade and do nothing <laughs> not much different than we would you know yeah absolutely i mean it's hard to convince yourself to run out in the middle of the day and do something they're like ah oh, we'll wait yeah sun up sun down rest of the day can just that's so fun well you got any availability coming up uh yeah i'm taking a few trips i've got an uh, I'm going with my dad for an elk trip, and then I'm heading to uh, to Vegas early September. But other than early September and early October, the first week of those two months, I'm I'm out. But other than that, it's pretty much wide open. open. So, All other right. than that, other than the first week of September and October, I'm All right. I'm around. I'll, I'll throw Garrett's info on the screen. Phone number: uh, five seven four two three eight eight nine six three. Uh, you can text me or call me. Either way, it's all good. Captain Garrett Frey, all in charters. Yeah, buddy. Aaron, Appreciate thank you, brother. you man. It's Always so pleasure, much fun. Absolutely. We have Captain Ben. How hey. are you, brother? Good thanks, to see you, man. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, my pleasure. How was your day? You look pooped. I am. So uh, I was just <laughs> telling you, man, I, I am shot right now. So uh, <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. So uh, I thought it was going to be, you know, oh, yeah, uh, less than 10 knots, you know, beautiful day. You know, So we get out there, you know, it starts cranking. And then it was just a, a tough one. And um, I don't know. It ended up being pretty good. We ended up getting like a 26-inch mutton, a few big hogs. Nice. Like, yeah, it just it, it it did not come easy. We had to work for it. But that being said, you know, I have been there. It's just one of those days. <laughs> well, I yeah. appreciate you coming by. For sure. Um, just wanted to chat a little bit. We, I think I skipped. I, like I was telling them earlier, I think I skipped a month. Um, I mean, other than we just had that storm roll through and the water went to crap. Where have you been diving? Oh man. So actually, I was out at the fort on Friday. Oh yeah. So I had some uh, buddies come in town and. Uh, I basically tried to show them like the works of like Keys Fishery. So we, we went out to the S Towers on, I think it was like Tuesday or something. Yeah. And actually it was pretty solid. I didn't even see any sharks. So that was pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Some big, I mean, uh, mangroves, like 10 pounders. And, nice. Uh, shot some other fish. And then on uh, Friday, we decided to make a run out to the fort. Basically waited for some like lines to pass as far as like squalls. And then we went out there. It was gorgeous, man. 100, 100 foot viz. But dude, I'm telling you, when I shot like my biggest uh, hogfish, and I got it to the surface, you know, we were in about 60 feet uh, on the bank. So yeah. we made a run for it. Oh, so, way out there. Yeah, for sure. So I got all the way to the surface and, you know, no issues. I would seen a few like reef sharks and stuff swimming around. I was like, oh, whatever, I'll, I'll brain it. And, you know, I hit it with a knife and it just did one of those, ah, just like, rang the <laughs> dinner bell. So like, I'm trying to swim it back to the boat and I just feel something like hit me in the back. And I look back and there's like two reef sharks. I'm like, Whoa. Oh. <laughs> so I've like tried to dip and dodge them. Uh, one manages to get its teeth on the tail, but it, it wasn't big enough to like bite yeah. through it. So I'm like trying to shake him off. I'm like, dude, I want this fish. Oh so, my gosh. Uh, dude, this bull, excuse me, this bull shark comes, takes the fish and the shaft out of my hand, bites right through the mono. And then the sharks were so fired up that, I mean, they're like hitting my gun that's just floating. and Just you know, anything. Uh, anything. So like, I'm literally trying to kick these things. I have my knife out. I'm like, <laughs> you know, oh so. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, bro. I, I literally, I, I yelled help. I was like, help. <laughs> uh, so it was a little emasculating, but I was out. <laughs> dude. Oh, dude. So, Not at all. Oh I've, I've had scenarios where you just. Like, what do you do? Like, yeah, so, I mean, dude. Get it, what you got and just start stabbing stuff. It was three minutes of just, like. Your chaos. E chaos. And then they f managed to finally get over. And, like, once my buddy, Mike, he was a pretty cool guy. And, you know, I, I never really dove with him other than that week. But, you know, a really solid diver. And um, he managed to, like, calm the situation down. It was mostly just having someone else there yeah. that kind of, like, subsided. But, yeah, it was definitely exciting. So Holy crap. Uh, I've tried, I've been kind of all over, but I, I think you can say even before those stir storms, you know, even right out front, it's been just, like, dirty. Yeah. And uh, other than that, just some ripping current. But I, I would say there's been some fish at least. Yeah. You know? Well, hold on. Let's go back. Did you oh. get nicked at all by the uh, shark No, or luckily not. But, I mean, I, I, there are very few times I've ever really been bumped. But, like, I yeah. got bumped. Like, Oh, man. Yeah. Um, Kanan may come by later. Hopefully he makes it by. He's going to tell me a story about him getting bit. Um, mm -hmm. 
It's a sharky area. Oh, dude, for real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that was another thing. I was thinking about that story, and I was just like, man, we are far from shore. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, That's and that's that's the worst place. Like, you don't want to get bit anywhere, but yeah. of all the places you dive in the Keys, that's probably the last place you want to get bit. For sure. It's just, it's way out there. I mean, 90, 90 miles, 85, 90 miles, just yeah. not ideal. Yeah, we um, plugged it in. It was 90 miles from our... <laughs> Well, I'm glad you glad you made it out of that unscathed. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to talk about, well, where have you been diving? You've been doing shallow stuff? Is it clear so, anywhere in the shallows? Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of the trips I do are a lot of, like, intros. I, I kind of try to run people through, like, a, almost like a beginning free diving course. Okay. Like, so we start off in the shallows, do a lot of lobster stuff, especially since, you know, the season just opened mm -hmm. up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for example, today I was out near the Alexander, and even though it was windy, you know, you could see bottom. Really? And for that area, I mean, that's... Oh, that's stellar. Yeah, that's pretty good. And you then, really um, can see the bottom out there. For sure. And then also last week near the end of the bar was pretty clear. Okay. I mean, it's like, it's probably a two, three knot current, but you could see the bottom in that's about That's what Garrett eight. was saying. Garrett's saying the current's just screaming everywhere. Oh, for sure. I so. was out on Sunday down. We went down a ways, and it was just... I saw you guys had a day smoking. as well. Yeah, it was all right. It started well, and then it was just chaos from there just yeah lightning and current and the water turned dirty and we we're just yeah. like well, i guess let's that's go what, home it's what keeps it excited <laughs> you know <laughs> well, I... but um lobster what have you so i was i was t saying earlier um mini season in the first days seemed so slow for me and it seems like it got better almost have, have you been seeing yeah so or? i would say the the local mini season it was a i would say dude man we limited it out for well yeah that one was great that was great but mini season that was a little bit tougher, you know, it was like 20 knot winds, yeah. three foot viz. And then I would agree, it kind of got better. And last week was actually, or two weeks ago, I would have to say it was pretty good. Yeah. And then, I don't know, today we were finding a bunch of shorts, but yeah. not that many big okay. lobster, you know? Yeah, I haven't been out in a week, meh, maybe a week for them, but I heard the Gulf got picked pretty hard. Um, I've been on the Atlantic and the coral heads are just stacked. They're all big too, like big ones. Oh yeah. I haven't had to measure any, they're all like an inch over. Yeah, so I have been seeing some of that, like, you know, like, especially in the rocks. I had been trying to do, like, the grass flats yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, the, the easier stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I so. got gotcha. you. That makes sense. For sure. Yeah, I just don't even like to deal with eels as well. <laughs> I had a friend. Was, I've been bit twice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That sucks. How bad was both it? Time, one, one was, both of them luckily just grabbed and let go. It yeah. wasn't, they, I didn't have to, because they had the. They were the smaller They ones. had the reverse teeth, but they just. It was a hey, what are you doing in here? Wham, and just a just one on the hand both <laughs> sure. times, and it just just punctures. But thought it wasn't worse. Um, yeah, for sure, definitely. But, but um, uh, yeah, what um, you got any availability coming up? Oh man, so I'm booked solid this week, but I would say you know about a week or two, you know things start to open up. Okay, I it's slow season for everybody. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, I'm. I may uh, have to put the boat down for a little bit of repairs. I'm unfortunately may have hey, to rip out my, uh, my it, fuel tank. I'm not happens. very excited oh, about no. that. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, that's a bummer. But uh, it happens. I hate but to hear it. Yeah, it's yeah, a little part sure. of the grind. Exactly. Um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, Ben mainly does spear fishing, but he does kind of a variety of trips. If mm -hmm. anyone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way? So I would say you know either my phone number 305-304-1307, or you could uh, reach me on Instagram El Caballo Blanco 305. <laughs> And uh, my website as well, pretty easy. So whatever it is, just uh, and he reach out. And Spanish and Thai. Thai. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll well, let I'm... you get going, bro. I know you're tired. I appreciate yeah. you coming by. Appreciate you as always. And uh, if you want to get out with Ben, do some spearfishing, lobster, and anything underwater, around the water. Yeah, I mean, shit. Give him a call. We'll go kite. <laughs> Kiteboarding. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Appreciate Thanks you. Again. Zach, how are you? The, the shirt you're wearing looks like you didn't fish today. I did not fish. <laughs> Sorry if I was all over the place. No, that. dude. I want I want all natural. This is I'm gonna leave this clip going. I want this all natural. Next. Let it, let it rip. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys. Later, bro. Appreciate you, man. What's that? Captain Zach Freeman. How are you? It's been a couple weeks. A couple weeks. That is a nice shirt. You like it? It's the cleanest shirt I've ever seen you wear. It's one of Russia's is old brand shirts. Oh. <laughs> I say he just took the tags off just in the truck. Case, just in case he uh, sees this. I haven't seen I'm you in short his, sleeves. I'm, I'm stretching the <laughs> sleeves out on him. How are you doing? Good. Good, man. Well, what's been the latest? When was the last time you fit? It's been a few days, you said. Been, yeah, it's been a few days. Well, okay. it's been good for us. Family yeah. we're getting sick, so yeah. I'm having to be dad and mom around the hey. house while Lauren recovers. Be dad. Hey, yeah, that's just being dad. Yeah. And you're out tomorrow? I'm out tomorrow and i got two more at the end of the week okay so we're kind of i i skipped july maybe even june 
What's the summer been for you? What have you been? I mean, I saw a couple weeks ago you had some really good catches of snapper and yeah. a couple groupers in there. What have you been doing? What's been the? I've the mainly latest? been doing reef. Yeah. Uh, Mahi have been a bit of a pain, having to run too much for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not nothing's really consistent. So Killing I've been time. I, I, you're wasting time, honestly. Yeah. So I've been trying to stick to the reef, keep to the action. You know, after the storms and stuff go through, uh, like we had Debbie push yeah. by, dirtied up the water. The west tide came through, and it was lights out fishing for yeah. a good couple of days. Right after? Right after. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. And uh, we had plenty of big tails, and the bottom bite was still was good at the same at the same time. Normally, you know, you're either doing one or the other. Yeah. But it, it was good at the same exact spot I was catching... I caught a couple of blacks off the bottom, muttons, reds, along with the nice. yellowtail. No, it was it was nice. Are you are you catching pinfish? Or are you catching them on cut bait? The muttons yeah. and the blacks? I, everything was on pinfish. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got the trap set. I thought about going tomorrow, but everyone's insane. It's screaming everywhere. The last time I fished, it was smoking. Yeah. Smoking, smoking. I'm and and it, it lightened up. It, it was tough. On spots that I go to, when the current is like that. And I normally get decent sized fish. I had some kids the other day, young kids. Uh, the fish were smaller than what I normally catch yeah. at that spot, you know, with those conditions. So I had to move around a couple times in yeah. order to get some fish, but yeah. got the job done. Any big tails? Are they still around? They, I mean, they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Well, just, they, get, you, they get a little, I, I always had more trouble in the summer when it got clear, but it's been so dirty, it'd probably been better. It, it was great. And there was, you know, after a couple of days of catching fish, I've got to post to social media, this and yeah. that. All of a sudden, one boat shows up the next day. <laughs> like, where's that? Going? The, yeah, the day after. <laughs> and it, it's a well-known area. Everybody yeah. fishes it. But you get there, you start hitting some fish. You're posting. Next day, the next boat's yeah. there. And it, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Two, three days later, it's a whole party. <laughs> so people dragging anchors and stuff around you, trolling motors. Oh, man. It's so funny. Yeah, no. But you haven't been doing much offshore? No. Have you no. heard of anyone doing anything? Um, not really, not really. I've been A to B from the marina yeah, to the house. I got gotcha. you. Have you done any lobster diving personally, not even for charters? I, not personally, no. I haven't did even... Did you do any charters for lobster diving? Yeah, yeah. I actually, most of my good days that I had fishing, I was done by 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning really? fishing, and I went and, and dove for a couple hours. Oh, and yeah. Got some lobster just to what cool down been, during the midday. What have you been seeing? It's everywhere that there was lobster for mini season, not really much anymore yeah and then everywhere that it wasn't that's exactly what everyone's been saying like they, it, it was stacked up everything flip flop yeah yeah that's wild and uh, i've been like i said i already said it earlier but uh, every single one that we've been catching i hadn't even had to measure they're all an inch inch and a half over legal there's and been some the good Atlantic. lobster so, so supposedly the gulf is i haven't even been to the gulf since i didn't even go on mini season but i haven't been since that time to look and everyone that's been out there is just like it's a wasteland so it seems really? like everything's moved to the Atlantic and it's all the coral heads and yeah, it's all the hard stuff for yeah, people the, to dive, which the is hard good. stuff to, to hunt. The, so the Gulf side is mainly ledges, grass flats. The ledges are flat and deep and you just take your tickle stick and pull them out. Well, the, the Atlantic side is mainly big coral heads with deep caves and caverns. It takes a little more skill to get them in, but maybe that's why there's more there. They walked. I don't know, but I just feel like I've been seeing more there. Yeah. We hit some grass ledges and stuff too. And that was pretty good. Typical small ones in the front of yeah. the grass ledges, yeah, yeah, yeah. but go underneath there and rake away and let them all come out crawling yeah. and people enjoy it, chasing them all around. Well, cool. What um, what else? You, you got anything coming up? I mean, we're kind of just, it, the summer's more of the same. We got, we're middle of August, September is going to be more of the same, then October, November will start switching a little bit, but. It, it'll start switching. There's actually, there's been some pillagers and stuff around. Yeah. So. I was down Marquesas diving the other day and dude, I got surrounded in a ball like five feet, like. The one that it's just one throw and done. They, yeah. just, they came and like swam around me for two minutes and then left. I was like, where are you going? You guys hang out. Hang out for a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, let me mark you. <laughs> no, bait's actually been pretty good, but the whole reason why I was using pinfish the other day is because with that storm coming yeah. through, it just marks everything up in yeah. the shallows, you know? So you can't see to catch the bait. But. That makes sense. We're going to go look tomorrow. Go What's see the if plan I can this find week? Bottom fish and st stick to the same plan that's yeah, been working? Yeah, the, the, everybody I have now wants to bottom fish. Yeah. So. Which I don't blame him. The mahi's been so tough. Yeah. Um, we had a good little push of that, of the mahi and stuff, right after the storm, too. Yeah. But bottom it, fishing was so good. Yeah, it's hard to say no. It's hard to say no it, when it I can does, go throw the anchor one time. and. 
Yeah, it you know, does seem like this teach. right after, everyone says the front's like, you get a bite before a front or a, a pre low pressure or a storm or whatever. But like, I remember even after Irma, maybe it's because there was no one here, but Irma was like some of the best fishing I've ever seen. Yeah. Remember like a week or two after? It was, just, it was, it was, it was lights madness. out. madness. It's like, I don't know if the fish are, if they feel so traumatized after the storm, they're just like hungry and want to eat everything. But um, that's cool. I wasn't here after, it was Debbie? Yeah. I wasn't here after Debbie, so I didn't see it. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to get out, but um that's awesome i'm glad to hear it's been good yeah it's been good man do you have um any availability coming up oh yeah so we're getting into the dog days of so august here. august september local month like m local time the island is quiet there's not a lot of tourists so a lot of the guys are open you want to make a short trip down come down and fish uh, yeah. most of the good captains are free a lot of the guys you're gonna have to plan way ahead to get up in touch with like zach but like right now it's slow for the most part, these guys have a couple trips a week, so they do have openings. Yeah, if plenty. anyone wants to call you, phone yeah. number. 305-849-3098. Captain Zach Freeman, Real Fresh Fishing. Yeah. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks so much. Good to see you. we got to get out there soon. Yes. i got to start filming do again something. or do something. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Oh, man. It's, it's just like you get to a point, and it's just like there's so much going on. And I did it. And you have kids. I don't even know how you did it. Zach, Zach has a YouTube channel as well. It's just kind of, kind of. He's took a little hiatus, but it's impossible between chartering. You're waking up at four or five in the morning, fishing all day, getting the boat ready, fishing all day, cutting fish. Then you come home. You got to deal with the kids. When are you supposed to film and edit and all that stuff? Now, when they went back to school. Yeah, <laughs> now. Now. Now is the time. Now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not gonna take this time for granted. I'm gonna try to knock out a few days this week or next week. I fly out Thursday. I'll be back next. Monday or Tuesday, if we can do something, if you want to get out. Yeah, where are you flying to? Uh, New York. I'm going to go see Will for his birthday and do a little hey. bit of striper fishing. Just like some goofing off. Nothing. I don't even. I probably won't film, but just some, just a little change of pace. Will's birthday's on Saturday, so we're going to go to an oyster farm and have some beers and lobster rolls. and. Living it up, boy. Living the dream. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying. Yeah. All right, so we have a new face. This is Kanan Elkins. He is one of the most prevalent commercial divers, if not the most, down here in the Florida Keys. Probably shoots more black grouper than anyone I know. Yeah, I would say that. Well, well yeah, the, the numbers <laughs> speak for themselves, but that's all off the record right well, now. Well, let's just, I want to put we'll something. Keep no out of this. <laughs> I want to put something out there, though. So there's, there's a uh, commercial quota of grouper that were allotted each year. What percentage last year did you shoot? It was something crazy. Well, I think we're allowed to shoot, I think like in the South Atlantic, it's 92,000 pounds. It's around like 89 or 92,000 pounds, which doesn't sound that much, but like black grouper is really lot. a niche species. Well, it is, but like in the Gulf, it's a lot higher with a yeah. lot of the grouper like quotas they have. But um, I got like 12,000 pounds last year of just black grouper. One boat. And I think that was like, I think they had like 68,000 reported. But then again, I had a lot of like late fish reports that came in. <laughs> but regardless, like different story. Yeah, I'm gonna put um, my glasses on. It's pretty sunny. Out it's there, a but... larger amount, but when you think about it, in like you got to think about it in different perspectives. Like up to the north, you get a lot bigger black groupers. Like in North Carolina, that's where you see like a lot of these like huge. Oh, the average pounds. are huge. Yeah, down here you have more than anywhere else, probably in the United States, if not like almost the world. I would say in a lot of, like when it comes to the condensity of black yeah. grouper, and it really is like one of the healthiest on the reef like fisheries we got right now next to like mutton snappers i would uh, that's say that's what i've been saying that's what i've been telling everybody i just the amount of black grouper i see compared to the amount of reds is insane so anyways I, that's I, that's Kanan's track yeah. record he's uh he's he's been in the water a few times he knows what he's doing he's uh if anyone knows what's going on with the populations it's this guy under the surface so yeah. what um what have you been seeing this year well i haven't had much time to really spearfish like i uh got my main seasons are between like may and obviously when the season closes in uh january yeah. um pretty soon in the year i got bit by a lemon shark i think it was on like may 21st so pretty soon not the ideal season. no not ideal at all but um to start the season it was like pretty slow ish this year i saw a lot of guys catching more fish out in the deep mm -hmm. and a lot of places where like you normally don't see it um like where they usually catch the red snappers and the mud snappers yeah. and stuff but it seemed that a lot of bottom bait was on those ledges this year and they were like really moving in i think hurricane ian has a lot to do with that too a lot of that golf bottom got filled in and that's like home to a lot of like 50 to 70 pound blacks yeah and if you were seeing like the guys that know what they were doing, they were catching like blacks around. Are you talking size. about all those little pocket ledges and stuff like that? Yeah, up to the north by yeah, Naples yeah, yeah. and stuff. A lot of that got filled in, and I know because I went to a tournament last year. Um, I think it was the King of the Reef, 
and my buddy from Naples, who's he's Ethan Ola, he's shot a lot, a lot, a lot of big groupers. Okay. He gave me all these numbers to go check out, and he's like, I want you to win it. Like, you've always put me on grouper, I want to put you on grouper for once. And we drive all the way out to these numbers, like 100 miles. Like, like, And I don't need to drive 100 miles to shoot black grouper, ever. No. But it was like for fun, you know, yeah. we're doing it. And the, all the spots, they weren't even marking anything. And no. finally we marked like one that kind of marked, and it was just like what was left of what you, you could tell used to be great bedrock bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so a lot of that got filled in, because I mean, with storm surges and all that stuff, it moves a lot of stuff around. Oh, absolutely. People don't even realize it. And I noticed on my spots, especially in Rebecca and towards the Tortugas on the north side, close to where the eye wall like moved through, a lot of the north side on the spots had like under like like the bedrock stuff was kind of like you know yeah. brushed up, and it made a lot of like new grouper holes and it filled in a lot of too. So the way I hunt a lot of my grouper spots is like it's a lot of low profile bottom that not a lot of people are going to try the hunt yeah. or would even mark anything. But like every now and then, you know, you got a good transducer running, you mark that one time where the yellow tail or everything's fired up and you find that one hole that those groupers like. And then you just kind of like base your searches around like that one spot and you just like, you know, dog, bird dog your way around spots and like condense the blacks yeah. to the places that you want them to go. Yeah, that makes sense. A yeah. lot of uh, a lot of the good stuff I have is real low relief like that, and people, especially out to the west, people yeah. assume like, oh, I need a thirty foot ledge. Well, the the fish is only this tall. Why do they need a thirty foot rock pile? Well, or a also, ledge to hide a lot it? of that stuff when they go into those rocks, it's bye bye. Oh yeah, never for sure. That's again. some of the hardest hunting there is. Is that and that big profile stuff? It's yeah. some of the gnarliest and looks cool, but then also the reef sharks can swim through that stuff yeah. too, and that's caused. <laughs> it's always scary. Like I've had times where I've like gone into like deep into caves. And when you see a shark, like there's been nurse shark and eels. I've been bit by an eel before too. Yeah. Um, but I had one time a reef shark like just brush through like a giant hole and like come right up close to me. Like he didn't know where I was either. He thought I was the fish, and he saw me and like freaked out. But like we were both like in like an enclosed oh, like, little wow. cave like that. That's and it was wild. really creepy because reef, <laughs> you know, those sharks gotta keep moving. But you know, it's a it's a lot of crazy bottom out west, and I love that shit. Absolutely. But, um, recently, you've been. I mean, you're back at it. Your legs. For the most part, fully healed. Yeah, I have some tendon damage in my toe, and I guess I should tell like what happened with the whole. Yeah, story. so let's go. Let's, so, yeah, since we're talking about it, let's dive in. Um, so I was just out there again. It was the third week of the season, and I was. It's been. It was pretty calm of, of May this year. Yeah. And like you know, really crystal clear waters, which I thought would be like great for me, but mm -hmm. it ended like not being like again. Like it was just a really weird year. A lot of the spots that I had that were really good in the past on the roll-offs and stuff weren't there and they were moving around a lot so i wasn't really seeing any consistency to like where the biomass was yeah and again in may you have like them they're still spawning in may yeah it's the tail end of their spawn it really starts like you know in november december time but like when they are spawning i feel like it's almost kind of the worst times to hunt them especially in the may time yeah december it's a it's a max spawn and almost like every like mile down a roll off you will find like some kind of spawning yeah. aggregation i feel like but in may it condenses down and but they're really more compact and like in bigger profiles so i would dive one spot there'd be nothing dive another spot nothing and then you have a third spot and there'd be a hundred yeah and that's not really fun to dive um so anyway we're out in the tortugas and i finally find a spot that they are sp all spawning on and i'm like i got like probably five blacks on the stringer and I was stoning most of them, which was like, you know, a yeah, good sign for like the, at least with sharks and stuff. But I shoot like a 30 pounder in like the end like ledge where there's a really nice like hole. I never even saw it. He was the biggest one on the dive. And I look in there like I've done so many times before and just like, you know, got him in there. But he was really, they, you know how they flare their gills mm -hmm. like that. So he's flared up in the back of the hole. And I really have to get in there and like keep like messing with him and try to pull him sideways and condense his gills. And it's 80 foot vis, but it's causing a lot of silt to like, you know, yeah. like, and there's still the blood. And I had the stringer on my elbow the whole time. But I finally hit the blackout. I put him to sleep with a little ice pick I keep on my uh, BC. And I'm coming up and I'm like reaching back to pull in my gun to reload. And I just feel something like grab me by the ankle. And uh, originally I thought it was my shooting line like wrapped around my ankle. And I just like pulled the gun against yeah. it because it just like was just pressure. And then I felt the teeth kind of sink in. And that's when I was like, what the? And I honestly at first thought it was an eel because like I've been bit by an eel before and they get really nasty and they oh, will absolutely. come out of holes after you and chase after you. And it just didn't feel like that intense of a bite. But then I looked back and it's like a seven foot lemon shark. He's got his whole like mouth around my ankle, like around my ankle, my foot, my fin and everything. And it just did one mean shake when we made eye contact. 
We made eye contact again, and he kind of like let go, and he ran away as fast as he could. Like he was petrified. He realized what you were. <laughs> I think he tasted all the like the toxins in my body and was like that. Um, all, but, the, all the nice on Duvall came out. <laughs> and, and more. <laughs> but, you know, I've been bit by a lot of things. They've they mainly been non-consensual, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that goes back to the Wall Street. Um, but... Yeah, it was just a misunderstanding with the identity, basically. I had all the fish on me. It was a lemon shark, okay. yeah. Seven-foot lemon shark. Uh, Maybe a little bit of, yeah, if you want to throw your leg up, I don't know if how much you can see. You, you got photos and stuff? I Ooh. do have photos. But right there, if you look how close it is to the Achilles, that's what really, oh. like, yeah. Oh, that could have been really And bad. then it goes around, around there, too. And that's yeah. the only damage I really have long-term is... The tendon on my big toe. Um, I can't really raise it all the way. I've been doing a lot of PT just by myself, looking up exercises and stuff. Would you mind if I threw photos on the screen? As yeah, we can put that in there if you're for squeamish, sure. I'm gonna yeah. throw some photos up. Just close your eyes. That's wild. So keep, but, sorry, go ahead. So yeah, when he bit me, that all happened, and I was just kind of in shock when it all happened. Oh, like, of course. I mean, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> I a just, shark on your leg. I was just pissed. <laughs> I was pissed off more than anything because I was really finally getting into the fish. Yeah. I was starting like to see a pattern and everything, and like we probably at this point had like 400 pounds in the boat, and I was like pushing to have a black. Yeah. I was pushing to have like a 600 pound trip, which is yeah. like that's a, a pretty by yourself. Oh, it's amazing. This is just like me and like a, 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 a driver driving for me, so we're just working on that, and then this happens. So I was just more mad than anything. Because you know you're out for a little while. A while. Yeah. And I mean, like, right away, I thought it was like, really serious because all you can see is just blood around your oh, like, ankle. And so I just get into a fetal, a fetal position, and I got my, you know, my hands around my calf, and I just kind of flutter kicked up with my other leg. leg. And mind you, this is, like, my ninth dive of the day. I'm in 80 feet of water, so I can't just, like, go straight up. Oh, yeah, you have to. So I got to, I mean, I did go up quicker than, obviously, like, they would prescribe in the dive books. But, yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of adrenaline running. And so I got up, and I have a great boat driver. His name's Sharif. He's been diving, driving for Sharif. me for about like five or he's six good, years. good people. He works all night making these kids right at the correctional facility at the jail. And he comes out on my boat. He sleeps while I blare out house, house music. <laughs> I don't know how he sleeps through it, but he does. And then, uh, yeah, he drives the boat for me all day, sleeps the way in, and he loves it. He's a good guy, and, like, he's he's been loyal as hell. Like, I I run a company by myself. And I am really good at shooting fish, but there's a lot more to it than oh, just yeah. that. Oh, yeah, there's other Obviously, parts, being absolutely. a business owner. But he was right there when I came up, and uh, I just kind of, like, I had, like, no energy to really say anything loud. And I handed him the stringer and the gun, and I go, I got bit. And he just kind of, like, smiling because it's a good stringer. He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, dude, we're going in. And he's like, what? And I, like, kicked my legs in because I usually, like, I got in under my own power and yeah. stuff. And I kicked my legs out because when I get in, it's really ghetto. It ruins my fins, but I throw them away after a year. <laughs> I kind of, like, push myself up and I kick my fins out. Yeah. And after a good dive, it's really, I don't know, it's just the vibe. But, or after a bad dive, it also is, like, an yeah. anger release. Anyway, yeah. um, I let go of my ankle and that happened and his blood went everywhere. Oh. And Sharif just looked at it and was like, he got, he's black, but he went white. <laughs> um... <laughs> And so my like fin was like filling up with blood right away. I was like, just get me a t-shirt, a towel, anything. And so I wrapped it up. I have like I'm a I have my limited tonnage license. I've said I was a third mate on like you know big ocean liners. Yeah. So I have a lot of that first aid knowledge, and I've done like survival, like you know, wilderness survival when I was yeah. in college, because I'm I'm a big hunter and stuff out in Colorado. So I I didn't want to tourniquet. Everyone's always like tourniquet, tourniquet, tourniquet. But realistically, if you're out that far and you're not bleeding out. Yeah. Do not do a tourniquet because you will lose your leg yeah. or like whatever like body part. So if it's not that bad, don't jump to. Like, you're not an expert. Don't go to that. If you're like pat, if there is like an artery that's been cut and you're bleeding out, that's like a tourniquet's your one of your last options yeah. you should ever use. But um, so I put a lot of pressure on it. And I just told Tree we're gonna load up the boat and like go back home. We're 60 miles west of Key West Ooh. at this point, so yeah. it's a far ride. It was a nice like it's like today. It was pretty nice and calm, but still. That's you know terrifying. it's a far it's a far run, and so I'm having him load the tanks up and like ice the fish, and I have my like leg elevated on my dash, and it slips down and it hits my kill switch on the boat. Oh, perfect. And so that's no big deal. I put it back in, but like I have never knocked out my kill switch once in my life. <laughs> so I had no idea that like to actually lift it back up and like put and the key back in. in. So the key's in, and it's like sitting there. And I'm trying to start it up. I'm like, what the? F like, it's not starting. 
and all my adrenaline's going. I'm really pissed off, and I can't think straight at all. And Sharif's like back pumping the gas ball because he thinks it's that. I'm like, <laughs> oh stop pumping the ball. <laughs> but so I go up and like I'm trying to change my battery out. Now we're like you know like oh yeah dead in the water like a beam to like the waves and stuff and the like, oh, rocket rolling. God. I'm getting shocked while I'm trying to change out a battery for no reason. And eventually, I, I changed the battery. I'm like, I still have all my power for my transducer, yeah, everything. everything. I couldn't think straight, but finally, I just like waved down and yelled to them that I was going by. He called someone else that was going by, and they picked me up. And they're like, we know you from Instagram. Oh, you're, my God. You're Gucci Kane, right? I'm just like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, help Kind of bleeding out here. <laughs> and so they, like, were, like, we threw the hook. They took us into the fort because at that point, you know, like, at that point, I needed, like, more attention. Yeah. This is now has been an hour since I got bit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so they take us into the Tortugas, um, and the Rangers meet me there. They took me in, and they took me into this, like, really, like, back into the fort. It was all a brick room, and there was uh -huh. no AC in it. Oh, my gosh. And so I'm, like, sweating out now, and, like, the adrenaline really wore off. And they were, like, they told me that like, the seaplane wouldn't take me back in, and the ferry would. But the ferry's going to take three hours. Yeah. And I have my boat still anchored out, like, off the Tortugas, like, 60 miles away from Key West. Yeah. So I had like all that shitstorm to deal with, and uh, they wouldn't give us the cell, like the the, the Starlink uh, password. Are you kidding me? So we couldn't get in contact with the owner of this establishment right here, Keys Fresh, and uh, the Docks Restaurant. Who's Johnny, done, who's done more than a few saves? In the yeah, who's had to do more than a few saves for people like us? Um, but that's like the community that we live in, and that's why Key West is great. But anyway, we finally had like some kid that was like one of the sons of the Rangers, like come up and be like, yo, like here, just use my phone. And we called Johnny, and he was out there in an hour and a half. And then, um, yeah, he took me back to my boat. We got the the second I talked to him about it, he's like, "Oh, blah blah blah," and we yeah, and we knew it was that right away. But he took me in to Key West, and I made it to the hospital five and a half hours after I got from my oh dog. I'm just mind blown. Like they won't give you the password to the Starlink. Like, dude, I got bit by a shark. It, yeah, it was <laughs> honestly I didn't understand that, but they were all they were all in shock too. Cause you have to understand, like these guys aren't like. They're park rangers. Yeah, they're used no, to dealing no, with like it. people that come on the ferry and telling and, them like, not to go over and this. telling them rules. Yeah, no, I get you. And like they get beaten down by like th the system. Yeah, it's government work, and yeah. I like you can't blame the people that get caught up in that stuff. Like not everyone can be self-employed like us and live yeah. by our own rules and do whatever we want yeah, yeah. to an extent. But like they're really wow. like it's a hierarchy of rules. Yeah, and they were trying to take care of me, and they were all under shock, and they were underprepared for sure. Oh, but. Um, that's just crazy. But they did do a good job, and I've talked to all the Rangers since. Uh, like I've been back to the Tortuga since that happened, and we've all talked and you know had a beer about it and stuff like that. So, no grudges on that. Now it all worked out fine. <laughs> Holy but crap! There was point where like I like started like like having bad tunnel vision, and just like really thought I was about to pass out. But it was it was so hot in that. Yeah. Room. Oh, absolutely. And I had no water for like. Yeah. And all that stress, I was sweating out. So. But I made it to the hospital and everything was good. It took me about six weeks to recover before I could really walk again. And then after like two weeks of like starting to walk and ride the bike around, I started diving again. And I saw an iguana crapped on your crutches. Yeah, iguana, they're everywhere too. That was the, <laughs> what kept, that's what kept me like active in the hunting mode while I was uh Just shooting iguanas commercially. <laughs> yeah, well, no, recreationally. Um, so I got, I do have to ask. Getting back in the water, does it feel different? Are you reluctant, hesitant, yeah, more? Yeah, 100%. So, like, I've, I've been through a lot of different, like, phases and, like, you know, of, like, recovery, I guess you could say. At first, I was, like, really excited to get back. Like, when I was still, like, limping. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to go back and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to kill the shark and all that stuff. But then I really started to think about that one aspect of it. Like, yeah. That's just kind of, like, silly to go try to go Captain Ahab and, like, hunt down the the shark that bit you but i do know he's got two hooks in his mouth i saw oh, that saw <laughs> yeah up close and personal oh, it's a popular yelltale spot so i mean like but that's what's happening around the florida keys is like we really are having a change in the behavior of sharks mm -hmm. everyone's saying it's the population i can tell you right now it's really not i mean like, you may disagree with that but i dive really fishy areas and the only places I have problems with sharks is where other people fish. Absolutely. Like, prevalently. They're learning. They're learning about the, the like, you know, they hear the engines. They know they know an easy meal and they want an easy, like, well, I, who wouldn't want an easy meal? That's why everyone's fat in America. Yeah. Fast food, easy meals. Yes. Yeah. You know, it goes it's, hand in hand. It's common sense. But, I mean, 
I don't like the attitude where people are thinking that we need to, like, like, you know, call all the sharks. I think a lot of people just need to learn how to kind of, like, deal with them. But also, I mean, the population doesn't be checked. You yeah. can't play God. And that's what humans try to do now is play God. And if we want to, like, take a bunch of species that are also apex predators, like groupers and snappers, yeah. we have to take out, like, the ones that Some of the other ones. Yeah, too. absolutely. I agree the whole that. argument that, like, scientists use is that, like, oh, like, trust us. If you took out all the sharks, like, there would be an overflux of groupers and snappers. And we're like, oh, well, What's the wouldn't problem? that be terrible? Because <laughs> we are the new sharks. Like, sadly, like, that sounds bad to say. But it's true, though. But we are the sharks. Um... The sharks still like I mean but I don't agree with wiping anything off the face of yeah. the earth. No, I don't I think that. that's just kind of like disgusting. But we, the people get put into a pickle cuz you can't shark fin now, but you can still shark fish. Yeah. So it's like we're going to catch a shark and kill it for no reason. So yeah. they put you in a tough position. Yeah. No, I and get I think that that, that with all without all the fisheries we're running into a lot of problems like that. Yeah. Where like the intent is right but it's not like in reality it's not producing the same like results that they would want yeah absolutely and it I creates a lot of distrust much. between fishermen and the people that make the laws when really we show we all want the same thing in the yeah. end and that's a healthy fisheries that we can all like have fun with live off of if need be or like whatever but yeah i agree that's a whole other topic i couldn't agree more so you've been diving since then have you um yeah i've been really shaky <laughs> Like, when I first came back, like, I was just so jumpy, and, like, even, sent, like, it's a slower time of, the, like, the year right now, but, like, I don't want to, like, I usually fill up a stringer and come up, or, like, I really work a spot. Now I'm kind of just, like, almost trophy hunting a nice, like, one big grouper, and then, like, you know, whatever, but I keep on getting scared about shooting muttons out in the open, especially yeah. yellow jacks. Yeah. Because yellow jacks really seem to always have bull sharks around them. <laughs> and it really has affected me on that result. But every now and like the other day I was out with my nephew. He's like a 14-year-old kid. And it was actually really funny. I tried the yellowtail for like three hours with him. And I get a big yellow brick road up. I'm like throwing another chum bag and like or a chum block. And he didn't like cleat the, the, the chum bag oh, back God. up right. And so we have 100 pounds of chum. Our last bit of chum, like, sitting on the bottom. I'm throwing oats. I'm like, what the hell? Like, they're still going down. And, like, he can't dive yet, but I want to, like, give him that experience. Yeah. He loves to fish. But to see, like, 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds of yellowtail just, like, yeah. go down to the bottom. Oh, my gosh. Something else. That's unbelievable, dude. But, like, with him, I, I, I had my first, like, bad encounter with a bull shark. I told him before I went down on the spot. I was like, hey had some rough experiences this year like it's obviously a heavily fished spot just like be close to the bubbles and i shot a black and he got off and like went down the ledge a little bit more and then like he was just bleeding out because i got him like right in the gills the yeah. far shots going all the way through um and when i got down to that ledge to shoot him again that bull just rushed in and it's like bumped me in the hip and i was like it was a pretty dirty spot too yeah and that ptsd kind of like kicked in and i had to go shoot that black again and I shot him again, got in my hands, like, I went way too fast up to the surface. And then I told my nephew, I'm like, hey, like, I, because he just got dive certified, so yeah. I want to set a good example. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, hey, we're going to another spot. I'm not going to shoot a fish, but I'm going to bring my gun, because I know that shark's going <laughs> to follow us to the next spot. Oh. I go down to the next spot, just to deco, so I go down to 60 feet, and sure enough, I see, like, a 40-pound black, like, just going to a hole. I'm like, <laughs> and so I go down, and I shoot him again, and I shot him through a hole, like, this big. But, like, he had an exit hole he was yeah. trying to go out of. So I can't get him out of the hole, like, yeah. with the shaft in. So I'm trying to put him to sleep, but I can't really get to him like that. And eventually I had to take the shaft. Like, and it's all stirred up. And I'm just, like, laying on the bottom. And that's how I got bit before. Yeah. Oh, so it's I can the imagine. same PTSD you thing going through my head. It. And so I take the shaft out. And I'm, like, there's, like, quivering every second. And I finally get it out and pull him out. And I came up. I'm, like, Caleb, that's how you face your fears, boy. Because, like, the... <laughs> <laughs> these kids nowadays they're afraid of like social interactments like he was yeah. afraid to go like order his food when i would take him out to eat and i'm like caleb like you have to put, like shut all the noise out of your head when that yeah. stuff happens and like because that was a really big like i don't know i don't really have a lot of anxiety over life because i've done a lot of crazy stuff well, understandably anybody would but getting like, back in the water would yeah be a little, you know. and you know i've had a lot of self-doubt when it comes to it because like my you know my whole life has been about my dad's been doing this and that's how i got into this yeah and he was always, I think, the best to ever do it in, like, his sector. My dad always did it alone by himself. And for the last couple of years, I was diving out, like, 60 miles by myself. That's and it was wild. very normal. But, but some of the stuff that's happened to me in the last year, I just can't do it anymore. But at the same time, I feel like I have to. Because it's hard to, like, get people to come out with you sometimes. Oh, at I, commercial spearfish absolutely. Tournament. 
because ever, it's expensive to live down here in Key West. And you get into that weird, like, and I can't, like, blame my friends because they have a job to live. And then also, after I get bit by a shark, <laughs> how good of an advertisement is it? Hey, come, come on, on out. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. Holy crap. Well, that is wild, man. Uh, well, glad you're still here. Um, that's just crazy. That's a, that's a wild one. It is a wild one, and it's going to be a, a bit of a recovery to get over it. Um, right now, like I said, I just wanted to get back on the horse. I miss most of the good season that I like, yeah. like to fish. So now I'm going to go back on the Great Lakes and just drive big freighters for a little bit. Come back here, and go elk hunt, and then come back here in November when the water cools off a bit. And then just, you know, do that. And then come back next year and just have a different approach to how I, like, I'm not, like, leaving commercial spear fishing, but I'm just going to do it a little bit less. I can less see. And stuff I can like see that. that I can see that. Understandable. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming by, dude. Seriously. Yeah, no problem. It was a pleasure. Um, thanks for sharing the story. Although traumatic, I'm sure. For sure. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Yeah. Goodness. Well, that is all we have for this episode of Doc Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something, and what a crazy story. Holy crap. Um, thanks to everybody who came by. Huge thanks to the docks at Stock Island. And something else I did want to say, if you are a guide in the Lower Keys, trolling boat, flats guide, um, and you want to be, um, or you want to come out and, and chat and share what you've been seeing, I can't guarantee I can get everyone, but I would like to get some new faces. So send me an email, info at keywestwaterman.com. Um, just send me your charter business info and all that stuff, and I'll, uh, I'll have a chat with you and see if we can get you on. I, like I said, I can't promise to get everyone on, but I would like to get some new faces on here. Um, but that's all I have, I believe. Did I say thanks to the docs? I'm going to go in there and grab a beer. If you're in the area, come check them out. Love this place. We're down here all the time. There's a good chance you'll run into us. I will see you on the next one. Later.